Welcome back. Okay, so in this lecture, we are going to take a look at cleaning up the, the peak that we just did in the last lecture. So we're going to make it so as the peels basically get into, you know, where the stem and the bottom of the pumpkin is, the, the amount of offset or the amount of peak basically falls away to almost nothing. All right, and that's kind of how it really works in a pumpkin. Currently, it's just a little bit too intense. So let's jump back into Houdini and take a look. Okay. Cool. So we're making pretty good progress here. So I want to go and clean up this stuff right here. That is definitely not a realistic pumpkin look. So what we need to do is we need to back all the way up to our profile up here. Okay. So here we have our points that make up our profile. And what I need to do is I need to put in some sort of gradient value. So as it reaches the two end points here, all right we basically need to multiply or subtract, I should say, you know, value from our peak. Okay, so the way I'm going to do it, and there's lots of ways to do this. I'm going to drop down a wrangle node because I'm a huge fan of VEX. And I'm going to do a gradient value. So I'm going to say float gradient, okay, is equal to our current point number. All right, so at PT num stores a current point number. All right, so basically this means that as we're looping through all the points, we're getting 0, 1, 2 inside of this variable right here. And I'm going to divide that by the total number of points, so NPT. So N points, there you go. And N points basically contains the number of points in this. So in this case, it would be 18 because we start at 0 and go to 17. So in total, we have 18 points. All right, so I'm going to subtract 1 from that. All right. And put parentheses around this guy. And a semicolon at the end. And you can see that I typed in the wrong function there. I need to not make that a, an attribute. All right, this needs to be a function. There we go. All right, so our gradient value currently isn't pumping anything out. We can prove that by doing that. So we turn it into an attribute. All right, and currently we're getting to zero, and that's because both these guys are integers, and we're trying to pack that into a float value over here. So let's put in an integer value here, like so. I'm I'm sorry, I meant float. I wanted to cast this to a float. I don't know what happened there. Total brain fart. And there you go. Now we get a value from zero to one. Very cool. So we don't need to actually store this all in the geometry. We're going to just put it into the, the color just so we can visualize it throughout the entire network here. So to do that, I'm going to say at CD, which is our color, all right, is a which is also a vector three, stores three float values. We want to say that that is equal to a CH ramp or a ramp channel. And I'm going to call this our fall off. And we're going to pump in that gradient variable right there. Very right, cool. So currently it's all black. And that's because we haven't actually created this spare parameter yet. All right, so I'm going to come up here and hit this little spare parameter button, and I get a nice ramp value, which is why this is a ramp channel. Okay, so with this value, I can go in here and control that fall off. So if you look over here in the scene view as I'm doing this, I'm determining where that black color is, where that transition from black to white is. And so if I add another value over here, put that guy at 1, put this guy at 0, I can now control where the peak falls off with this ramp. And I think that's going to be pretty good. Cool thing about it, this is all procedural, so we can change it later on. So I'm going to make a little more space there by holding shift on the keyboard and moving all those nodes up. All right, and so I'm going to come down to the bottom here. Let's see, we come all the way to the connectivity, and you can see that our vertex colors, our point colors here, are surviving all the way through. They're not getting deleted or anything. We can come up here and just constantly adjust that value, both on the top and the bottom. Cool. All right, so what we need to do, when we get down to this peak node, I need to make sure that the peak gets multiplied by this ramp value that we've created. And to do that, I'm actually going to make it easier on myself. And I'm going to just create my own custom peak. So we're going to say custom peak right here. Because the peak node honestly, is really just taking the normal value and displacing the point by its normal. So we can do that inside of a wrangle node real easily. We can say at P, which stands for the position of every point in here in 3D space. All right, so it's a vector 3 as well. And we're going to say that that is equal to, or plus equals to, our current normal times our current 
CD color, so cd.red. There we go. And you can see currently right off the bat, we don't get anything. We actually get just this really crazy look. And that's because we're not taking into our account our group over here. So I need to hit this little drop down and select the inner points. And there we go. Look at that. That's a pretty cool shape in and of itself right there. So what we need to do is give ourselves some sort of slider control, right? So this slider in the peak node is just a slider. So we can make one of those also over here. So I can multiply this normal value by a float channel like so. We'll call this uh, global peak, something like that. Sounds good to me. There we go. Hit control enter on the keyboard to commit the code. Hit the little spare parameter and now we have our own slider. Look at that. And we're currently getting the same peak value up here, which is odd. And that's because our color is somehow getting lost up here. And that is because I need to just select that guy. All right. So if the loop hasn't actually gone through and cached, you can always hit this reset cache pass or just select the bottom node. And then it'll update the mesh. So now it includes the vertex colors. I always forget about that. And there we go. Look at that. We now have control over the peak with our custom peak node. And the, the insides here are getting nicely multiplied with that fall off value. So I can come back up and adjust that even more, make it a little bit more apparent. All right. Oh, and again, I need to select the bottom one here. So uh, what I need to do, let's just wire this in. Okay. This will become a little bit more apparent this way. So let me just select this guy and select this guy. And then we'll go back up and adjust our fall off up here. There we go. So you can see now we are getting a really cool look here. And I also need to make sure that we get rid of the peak here. There we go. That's what I was looking for. That is way better. That's way more like a realistic pumpkin. So now let's go back up again and adjust this stuff. So there you go. So now you can adjust it. So it falls off nicely. You know, usually it's kind of smooth on the top there. You know, we're going to cut out the, the top here in just a second or in the next lecture. And then on the bottom, it does kind of look like that usually. It does smooth out though. Yeah. Now it's starting to look like a real pumpkin. How cool is that? All right, so the last thing I really want to do, let's just override those colors. So let's give this more of a pumpkin color. Just to have some fun now. We'll do something like an orangish color like so make that really bright very cool all right so i'm going to close the lecture out there and in the next lecture we're going to fuse all this together do some more vertex color work and then we're going to cap these guys off and start working on the top part all right thanks so much